You're listening to Were You Still Talking? Hey, welcome to another episode of Were You Still Talking? This is Joel Albrecht once again, and on my show today, I have Shonger Daniel. He was one of the first officially recognized bioenergy healers in the former Yugoslavia, trained by the legendary, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Zenko Dominik. I'm going to ask him to pronounce it later. <laughs> while this teacher has headed more than a mi- while his teacher has healed more than a million people, uh, sh- uh, Jonger has no such ambitions. Instead, he would like to teach a million people how to become healers themselves. In the U.S. since 1991, he has become an internationally known healer and lecturer, and the first honorary president. I lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's the first internationally known healer, uh, first honorary president of the International Biotherapy Association, which is what's based in the UK. His lectures and his internationally sold book, Biotherapy, A Healing for the 21st Century, were approved for continuing education for massage therapists throughout Florida. He also has a double DVD, Energizing Tai Chi and Qigong, The 18 Steps for the Absolute Beginner, as well as a children's book, The Girl with the Healing Hands, Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Apologies for the mispronunciation. <laughs> That's fine. I get used to it. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You are very welcome. Um, I mean, there's a lot I want to get into here, but I kind of want to, uh, I kind of want to ask first about the. I looked on your YouTube channel and I was checking out the YouTube videos, and I have to say, what really caught my eye was the BMW on an Oregon road. And so I was, <laughs> I was curious where you were because I live in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> I know these roads. <laughs> I, I haven't been to many places in Oregon, but I, I ride wherever I go mm-hmm. uh, or wherever I can. If if it's not my bike, then I'll borrow one or or uh, rent one or such. Uh, somehow, most of most of my my travels involve motorcycle. It, it's a must. Nice, nice. So, how long have you been doing that? Have you traveled all over on a motorcycle? Yeah, I, I started, uh, I got my first moped when I was 14. Oh, God. And it was wow. one of those that, that was like a motorcycle, but only 50cc. It had four gears and, you know, clutch everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. by the time I was 16, now factory, that bike went maybe 25, 30 miles an hour. By the time I was 16, it was doing about 55, 60. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was the start. And that bike took me around, you know, the former Yugoslavia and went over to Hungary, uh, rode around when I was 16. It, it was really amazing. That's, that's the speed where you see everything. And of course, at that time, we were envious of the big motorcycles that passed us. Uh, and right, so right. <laughs> we got to that point of we have the big motorcycles. And now we're looking at those little ones like, man, you remember those? We used to see everything. And, and still better than pedaling. Uh, that was that was the original idea. But um, it's just a different experience, you know. You feel the wind. You you just you feel free somehow. Right. And, right. And uh, it it gets off some of the aggression too, if you know if you ride it that way. Or you can <laughs> yeah. go off road. You know, there's no rules off road. You just have to watch yourself not to get killed. You know. Don't look at the tree. Well, that's the <laughs> hard. Yeah, that's the hard part. They're watching yourself not to get killed. That's why I've always yes. thought I would be too uh, too crazy. That's, but I have <laughs> friends that ride bikes. Well, I mean, so, it's it's always something. Yeah. But I think the the real reason for for riding is it puts you in the now. It puts you in the moment. So you feel alive. You're in the moment when you're in a race car driver or or a motorcycle rider because. Any moment you can get killed, so your your uh, your senses are open, and you're you're constantly in that moment. You can't think of something else when there's heavy traffic or mountain curves. You know, you're just looking at the end of the curve and then the next one and the next one, and and you forget about everything else. It's a sort of moving meditation, like like a motorized tai chi. <laughs> That's so interesting. I, I may have done some racing when I was a youngster on the streets. And um, you, 
I do. I never. Th- that was long before I ever heard about being in the moment or or ever thought about it. Um, but you definitely are. You yeah. That's all you think about. That's the I whole mean, point. Yeah. And, uh, many times, I mean, we we take uh, GoPro recorder recorders and and uh, such because most of the time we we miss the real beauty when we just concentrate on on those curves. Right. Last, uh, last summer, I I took my fiance on a trip from. In Budapest and through Austria, we stayed a week in the in the Alps where I taught uh, a seminar, and then we continued Switzerland, Italy, Slovenia, all the way to Serbia, all on motorcycle. And you know the main thing in the mountains was I, I told her, look, I mean you lean with me, but you get to enjoy everything as far as the view goes. I get to enjoy the road. I mean it has its own special feeling. Uh, uh, you're just you're just one with it in in a way, right? Right, a hundred percent. You, that's the only way. I mean, that's the only way to stay alive, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's. I mean, for for work, I I mainly meditate. I do a lot mm-hmm. of meditation. I do long distance healing, so it it has to keep me in a, in a calm state, and. You know, you can't stay in that state. Maybe some gurus can. I'm, I'm not uh, such a person. So I, I have to do a little bit of the opposite. You know, working out helps. Uh, movement helps. But, but getting on, on a fast machine is a totally different world. It's, it's the absolute opposite. And so, you know, the, the mechanical uh, uh, kinetic motion balances balances that stillness of of the mind and the body uh, ultimately oh right yeah i played drums for years so it's a similar type of meditation where you're yeah, yeah it's I an assume, active yes. meditation yeah. when, <laughs> yes once yes. once you get yeah when you're not practicing or, or you're not there's a certain point where if you're and you're in the moment is, again yeah. you don't think yeah. about you know oh, i have to pick up milk on the way home and you know, you hit your drums, right? You're right. You're exactly. in the music, and and that's when you really live. That's that's when you're alive. That's that Zen. And so, how you say you meditate? Um, how much do you meditate a day, approximately? Uh, between how- one and two hours. Oh, okay. That's so, quite a bit. but it's it's quite not you yeah. know it's not just a classical meditation. I actually work when when I meditate. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I go into a, a deep meditation and I, I see my clients and I, I work on them on their energy fields, mm-hmm. remove when there's too much, you know, in essence, balance the energy and, and jumpstart the flow. So it's, it's a similar treatment to when you're right beside me or in front of me. But when you're in front of me, I have a visual, I can feel your energy with my hands. When it's a uh, distance, it's a little bit, a little bit harder. But we're all we are all connected, not just through Zoom. We have been connected way before any electronic device uh, showed up. But when they showed up, we had uh, quite good evidence of it. You know, we can think of someone, and the phone rings with that person on the other line, right? Or you think of someone, and you get a text from that person. How is that possible? <laughs> you know, we we're all psychics. That's the truth. We were just not taught how to how to use that ability. That is such a good um, picture of. It's a good visualization for people uh, um, about being connected. Right. How, you know, now we're connected electronically, but this is always how it's been. And you you pick it's up the phone and like, yeah, I was just yeah. thinking about you. <laughs> you know what the heck? But there, there can't be that many coincidences, right? So right. there's something right. beyond that. And and there are plenty of plenty of, of uh, explanations through quantum physics and through uh, frequency theories, through Earth's frequency. Through I mean, right now we're bombarded by thousands of frequencies. We only pick up a, a very tiny fraction of that. I mean, our visual is is so small in in the entire uh, uh, from from infrared to to ultraviolet and beyond. We, we capture just a small portion of that. <clears throat> we don't hear many things. We don't see many things. Many animals do a lot better than that. Although a dog will never see a rainbow. Right? So that's also a frequency or several frequencies. So 
it's quite quite easy to get deep down and ex explain it all. I I wrote plenty about it in my book or in my books, and uh, there are some good ones out on the market that really explain it in in detail. It's not anything new anymore. It's not voodoo. It's not something you know made up. It's quite measurable. Mm -hmm. Many many years ago, they would have measured already things in your body that they could measure in a radio amps ohms volts you have all of those and um, essentially it's it's the energy flow through your body that regulates everything in your body so it's connected to every aspect of your being so working with the energy will affect every aspect of your being whether it's mental emotional physical spiritual and and whatnot I love it when people start to um, when people answer questions that I'm thinking of asking. I was <laughs> kind of thinking of asking you explain energy healing, you know, to people who and haven't then heard for of the, it. Your I next, think you just uh, did. your next question, uh, it's yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! That's great. Um, gosh, that's hilarious. In in essence, so, you know, uh, when you look at a, a motorcycle, you have the, the human body, you know, you have a lot of connections, you know, you have an air filter, you have, you know, the air filter through your, through your nose, you need, you need the air for the, for the piston to, to, and, and the mixture to happen. Um, you have shock absorbers. <laughs> it, it's all, all similar if you look at it that way. But of course, it's totally different. I just uh, like the approach from quantum physics because I, I learned uh, uh, engineering when I was in college. I was always into technical stuff. Mm -hmm. The, the mm -hmm. healing stuff only came out when, when I was in my early 20s. Actually, at, at age 20, 21, I was just dabbling with it. It just came up. And it really wasn't that serious. I... I was able to stop some pain and it was it was really a new thing you know end of 80s there was nothing about it in in uh, yugoslavia or in europe a little bit about far east philosophy but we we did not see or hear anything about energy healing so it came as a surprise almost and uh the real surprise happened when when i realized that i could actually move people without touching them that's that's when I I realized that I I have to change professions. You know, maybe you know I love engineering and everything, and I I did finish school, just kind of like make my hap my parents happy. Um, but I was done with it when I was halfway through. This this new thing was was amazing. So where did you hear? How did that come about? Like where did you hear about it? Did you? Uh, find it was a, book a family. It? Oh, it, was a family. No, it was a it was a family friend who, mm -hmm. who stopped by. Actually, my dad's uh, childhood friend. He was an editor for a, a big publishing company, so he always read the new books. And he came came over one day, and he was talking about this energy, you know, showing like, "Hey, feel this." And I pick up my hands, and well, I felt this my whole life. I just didn't know what it was. Right. Really, right. here, do this, do that, you know. And he explained a few things. And, um, you know, that was that. But then a few days later, uh, my, my buddy's ankle was hurting and he was a marathon runner. You know, it's like, hey, can you do something with that thing? You know, with your, <laughs> I was, you know. So I had no idea what I was doing, but eventually I was able to stop his pain. We both felt some tingling, some heat, you know, some weird stuff. We were like, dude, do you feel that? Yeah, man, I feel it. And so it was like that. I would stop a few headaches and nothing to it. And then one day when my mom's back was hurting, I just kind of by then I visualized like pulling the energy out or, you know, the excess. In my mind, that's what I saw. So I stepped behind her and I started pulling this invisible, you know, pain out of her back when all of a sudden my mom started leaning back. Like what the? I push my hand forward. My mom goes forward. Pull my hand back. My mom goes back. I'm like mom, what are you doing? She goes nothing. What are you doing? I said I don't know. And so, long story short, what do you do with such an ability? 
you know, you, you freak out first. And then well, go, yeah, oh, this is, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> this is kind of cool. So uh, I went out. I mean, you know, at that time we were out just about every night, college years and stuff. So in the middle of the pub, I told my buddies what happened. And that was a make or break moment. You know, it, it could have stopped right there, the, the whole thing. But we made bets and, and eventually the whole pub was in it and we, we were betting in beer, who's going to move and who's not. So by the end of the night, I was moving pretty much everybody. I had no idea what I was doing. I've never seen it anywhere. We just, hey, I, you know, I tried pushing, pulling, stuff like that, and, and it worked. And that, so what, now, hold on, wait a minute. So <laughs> do you, <laughs> you did this based on on bets at a bar. The so you were very inebriated by the end of the night. Oh yeah, you were oh, betting yeah. beer. So oh yeah, <laughs> but you know, eventually I found out that if you have a few, it kind of works better because you're more relaxed. Of course, it's not a requirement, and that was a long time ago. Uh -huh. But the college years helped with that. Oh, and, that's uh, great. Yeah, that was the start, but. Then where do you go? Nobody's teaching this, you know, nobody, you've never seen anything like this. And then the same, my mom was, was screaming like, come here, look at this. Uh, in the news, they were showing this guy, this Danko Domancic, mm -hmm. uh, healing people. And first they showed an aerial picture of, of people snaking in line, waiting, waiting to, to see him. It was on a small Adriatic island with narrow streets, you know, beautiful weather, and you just you just see a colony of people waiting in line. Then they went inside and showed cameras. They showed uh, him bending people and moving people without touching them. And I was like, "Holy mackerel! This, you know, this is the guy. I gotta, I gotta go meet him." Now this was about four hundred miles away from me. Um, this was before Google, before the internet. So it was hard getting in touch with anybody. And eventually I heard from a, a hotel clerk there that he moved away. He, he wasn't there anymore. So oh, no. a few weeks, yeah, nothing, uh, like it's lost. Uh -huh. A couple of weeks went by again, and my marathon runner buddy ran over with the newspaper. <laughs> I get it. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> It was about a professor who was indeed measuring the amps, ohms, volts, and such in, in the human body. Uh, it was the next weekend. I called him up. I begged to get in. I was telling him, you know, about my abilities. He says, all right, come on over. And basically, he was, he was just doing a study on, on, the, on the energy fields of the body. But based on thousands of measurements, he could, he could let you know if, if you were a gifted healer or meant to be a healer or such. So uh, at the end of the, the whole experiment, he pulled me over like, hey, look, uh, look, you were born to be a healer. I don't know what you're studying right now, but that's what you're supposed to do. Like, great. So where, where's the school? Where do I sign up? You know, I mean, there's nothing. And where's the around. university? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> He said, no, no, I got a, I got a guy who can teach you, you know. So we got in the car. Half an hour later, we got out in the hotel outside of Belgrade, and he introduced me to Mr. Domacic. So goosebumps. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, it, it, was, it was really amazing. You know, I'd, I'd been looking for him, and boom, there he is. So I, I studied with him, worked with him. Um, it, it was it was amazing. I mean, his work looks a little bit different from anybody else. There would be a few hundred people sitting around in a circle, and he and a few of his students would be working on each individual. Just a few minutes. It doesn't take long. This this collective energy and consciousness and everybody concentrating, you know, on the same areas, creates such a an energy flow that. You literally would come in with a headache and sit there for five minutes and your headache would be gone. So, and everybody's there looking at miracles happening. You know, they come every day. Hey, Monday, that guy couldn't walk. Look at him today. You know, so it was, a, it was an amazing energy. 
And of course, I wanted to learn it. And of course, I did and uh, uh, started my own practice. It was in the, the north of Yugoslavia. Uh, the first month, I had about 30 patients altogether. Two months later, it was 30 a day. Wow. <laughs> so, and wow. that was all, <laughs> it was all word of mouth. Now, over there, again, this was before the internet, but I'm sure it's still like that. You stop somebody's headache, <laughs> the next, next day, the entire street knows about it. And they're calling you. And sometimes, you know, they didn't have money to pay. You know, I'd get eggs or stuff like that. You know, I, I went to some villages in the area and then they would get together in the, in the school room and we would work like that. So it was very interesting. It, it, was, it was amazing. It was uh, uh, the best thing I could have thought of for me at the time. And then um, I, I came to the States for vacation. This was in uh, 91. And right after that, the war started in Yugoslavia. And, uh, and just around the time I was going to go back, they said, no, no, stay a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> things, things are getting bad, and they did turn bad. So uh, I'm still here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you were, you almost had, you basically sounded like you had a calling to be a healer, but you're not, now you're trying to teach others to, to be able to do it themselves. So this sounds like, Anyone could do this, uh, you know, if they learn the Absolutely techniques? Absolutely, anyone yeah. can do it. Now, in, in the old times, you know, they made us believe that we were gifted. And, well, we possibly were, but they mm -hmm. were just concentrating on the gifted people. And uh, while in the States, I, I did all kinds of jobs. You know, at that time, I could not transfer my engineering degree. I could not do the energy healing. Uh, so I, I had to get some kind of a job. Uh, first one was uh, delivering pizza on a motorcycle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, something you knew how to do. So, you knew how to ride anyway. <laughs> I borrowed enough money to, to get a motorcycle, and, and that's, that, that was a start. <laughs> then I was a Japanese chef for, for a year, uh, doing tableside cooking and blowing fire and, and all of that. Uh -huh. While I was uh -huh. already healing people and, and going to massage school to get uh, a license where I can officially heal with. And that was the fastest way. And at that time, I didn't think I would stay longer than a year or two. So it was just, uh, I looked at it as continuing education, and then I'm going to go back and, and do some more work. But slowly it changed and, and uh, turned into full-time just uh, energy healing and and. Uh, I do. I still do some body work when when it's needed. When I see that deep tissue work is needed, but uh, that would be impossible long distance anyway. Oh right, yeah. However, the so. the energy healing affects the the muscles as well, and uh, I mean really every aspect of of your being. That at one point I was uh, teaching Tai Chi and Qigong. And that's when it came up that, look, we're talking about the energy here. We have to might as well feel the energy. And I realized that as I was teaching it, everybody felt the energy. Now, let's say 95% of the time gets it right away. Right, right. And I taught them how to see the energy. And again, 95% could see the energy. Holy mackerel, well, maybe they can do the healing too. And slowly that evolved into full-time teaching uh, uh, of of the energy healing and and this specific art, although a little bit, uh, I changed a little bit of it. I added some of these. My teacher doesn't teach you how to feel and and how to see the energy. Over the years, he developed a system where you know for specific things you will have to do specific. You know you have to hold your hands here for such a such and such amount of time. Then you have to do this movement. And so every illness has its own system, what to do with it. I added a little bit of the freestyling to it, which goes back to the, the origins of, you know, when you feel where the energy is off or where you see it and, and adjust the flow. In essence, your, your, your body, just like everything in the universe is made of atoms, right? Deep inside the atomic structure, there's almost no matter. 
if you look at the nucleus and magnify it, magnify it to the size of a pinhead, stick it in the middle of the stadium, the, the first electron will be outside the bleachers. In between, there is nothing, right? Now, if, if the nucleus is a pinhead, then that little electron is a bacteria. You wouldn't even see it. But let's say it's there. It goes around that stadium so fast that like when you take a pendulum and spin it, you just see a circle. You would hear, feel or see a ball the size of the stadium. But deep inside, it's all empty space. That's your atom. Now you put together a bazillion of those. And here you are thinking, well, you, you know, it's kind of flexible, but hard, solid. But yet deep inside, 99.9999999999% of this is empty space. And so we manipulate that empty space, which is electromagnetic in nature. And so anything electromagnetic will affect it. But since we're all electromagnetic, one person will affect the other, right? Of course, you can affect yourself the most. You could be the healthiest person on the planet if you really, really, really decide that. <laughs> if you know how to think. If you know how to think. That's, that's really yes. it's, that's good to hear <clears throat> because I recently read an article about someone who's uh, almost a billionaire trying to live, is trying to be as young as he can, basically, by spending a lot of money on himself, mm -hmm. not by doing any of this, but doing it all on the other end where it's it's like all physical work. You know, he's having doctors <laughs> test every piece of his, do all these painful tests and he's changing his diet to be extreme, I, I, like in the extreme <laughs> and taking all kinds of supplements. And it, it just, it, it was interesting because I th you're kind of talking about a similar thing you know, doing I, it on an I, energy level rather than... I realized the, the, the secret of health just recently. I mean, I lived it my whole life, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize what it was. And, and it came to me as I was writing my last book, but um, it was like one of those moments. So, first of all, this, this energy... It goes roughly as far as you can reach. It goes around you. So it's not just inside you. Just like, uh, like an electromag a, a wire that has electricity in it mm -hmm. would have mm -hmm. a magnetic field around it, right? So we have that electromagnetic field around us. It, it forms like, like an egg shape around, around you. Like uh, you know, the spaceship Enterprise has that protective layer around. Now... When the layer goes down, you know, Scotty, the, you know, the shield is down. Uh, they're going to get us, you know. The every shield time. Is, yes, every time. <laughs> <laughs> so when your shield is down, you're vulnerable to outer influences, viruses, bacteria, bad people, wh whatever it is. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. your energy is strong. And you also notice this when, when somebody's depressed, you know, you can see their whole body is closed in, right? And when somebody's happy, they open up. You, you know, somebody happy walks into a room and the room lights up, right? So these are all energetic changes. Um, you want a balance. Everything in the universe is imbalanced. This is supposed to be imbalanced as well. Too much is not good. Too little is not good. And for that to not happen... It has to have a constant flow. You know, the river never stinks. It's the pond that will stink. So that goes with the, with the energy. You know? Now, if for some reason the energy flow stops, let's say for your, for your, from your neck. Here's a, an example. This is what you do all day. You know, the neck muscles tighten up. That's very easy to see. Oh, for, for but, those of you just listening, he's looking at his phone. So if, uh, if you're listening yes. to the podcast, <laughs> he's yes. looking at his phone, looking at screens. That's <laughs> what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So you look down. It, it's like a new new issue. I mean, in, in the old system of my teacher, you know, you would work on the head, heart, and feet with each individual. I added the neck. It's, it's the last, you know, 
decades uh, problem, there's not many people around who, who have no neck problems. So the, the energy doesn't have the ability to flow freely at that point, and it will start piling up. And because there's less energy flow going down the spine, you know, the energy goes up in the front, goes down behind you, it piles up and too much energy causes a headache. There you have a headache. It's a simple explanation. Uh, mm -hmm. Now you take yeah. a pill, numb yeah. it, or you know, deal with it some other way, or you come and see Trongor and it will take me two minutes to just remove that excess energy and the pain is gone. Wow. Many but, times wow. we have it's to go into many details, you know, to find the exact reason for, for some issue, you know, for illness or pain or so. The reasons can be numerous. But as far as putting the energy back in balance, that's my goal. And also jumpstart the energy flow. Now, your body may or may not get used to it. If you had a problem for many years, it, it will be harder. It will take more sessions for the body to get used to it. Let's say I fill up your energy to 100% today. Tomorrow, it may go down to 80 or 70 because it's not used to it. Then we do it again. Then, you know, we keep continuing until, until it stays at a, at a healthy level. And then the body continues its own function when it's in, when it's in own, you know, a healthy environment. Uh, and it means it can heal itself as well. Just like it's not the Band-Aid that heals you. You know, it's your, your body that does it. Right. The Band-Aid just keeps dirt out. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Yeah. Understand. So, after and years of, of doing this and sharing with, with, uh, with many students, I realized something. Somebody asked me, like, well, when, when, you, when did you see a doctor last time? Oh, that was an issue. Yes. Uh, I remember. <laughs> I went to give blood. And uh, they asked me about my physician, and I don't have one. So when did you see a physician last time? 1989, when, when I went to a doctor last time. Nice, nice. Uh, I went to eye doctors, I went to dentists, I, I, I broke a leg, they, you know, they put me back together. So, uh, you know, I don't negate uh, modern medicine. I just... Uh, I just think that people can be educated about helping with themselves and healing themselves a little bit more. This could be taught in school. My daughter was two years old when she was able to stop other people's pain without knowing what she was doing. Wow. Just mimicking wow. my moves. And, that, and what, it, yeah. it, eventually we had to write a book about it. You know, when she, when she was nine, uh, she did the illustration for, for that book. That so. is great. Well, I've yeah, I've been I've thought for a long time, basically since I learned about meditation, that meditation should be taught in schools, even if even if they did just a few minutes a day, it would you know it would Absolutely. probably really improve people's ability to to pay attention and, and well, look, to learn. meditation, so, good yeah. good diet. They could give them good food. They could uh, teach them many other things, even how to balance a checkbook. But, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's true. It's a checkbook, no one even... <laughs> <laughs> people don't even know what that is anymore. <laughs> like I, I was reading on your, on your introduction and I, and I was reading on your bio that you have a DVD. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I will get your DVD, but then do you send a device that I can play that on? <laughs> <laughs> it's an old bio. Is it? <laughs> Gee. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah, I, well, hope, I hope I, there's another way to get that now. I, 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 I live in Southwest yeah. Florida. There are still a lot of DVD players around here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've heard that. I've heard that. Very cool. So, yeah, in essence, that, that's the, the point to to teach people how to do this and when they they go like oh I, you know i can't do that who's i can't feel stuff then we stop for two minutes and i teach them how to feel this energy mm -hmm. and when they realize like oh gee you know i can do that i can do anything now it's the same purpose if i do a big lecture and i i pull out 
somebody or several people and push them around without touching them, it, it has the same effect. It, it will give you a motivation like, gee, if he can do that, he can heal me. Not knowing that all the healing is already in you, all the abilities in you. You just have to bring it out. But in essence, uh, going back to this doctor thing, I realized that the more I work on others, and it can be long distance, it doesn't have to be hands-on because the energy still moves through you when you send it to others. Now, the, don't get me wrong, this is not my energy. This, this is everywhere. Just like the air we breathe, as if I inhaled it and blew it on somebody else, it's almost the same way my body works with the energy. Right? So it's there, it's free. Now, when, when I give it to others or push it to others or manipulate that energy, it goes through me. And so what happens there, it prevents the formation of obstacles. And that's what, what keeps me, you know, pain-free and, and uh, illness-free. This is what moves, moves the energy constantly. So that's, that's my secret to, you know, being, you know, in a healthy, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a healthy life. Uh, the more you help others, the, the healthier you will become. And of course, I, I mean, with this system, I, mean, I don't know how other help would, you know, may not work like that. Right, right. Yeah, this is pretty, it's amazing stuff for me to, uh, to hear. I'm going to want to learn more and more about it. I've actually suffered from chronic pain for over 10 years in different areas. Um, mostly my back, it's gotten slightly better, but it, you know, it makes sense to me that it's stuck energy, like. That it's, it, it's all it, stuck it's, energy yeah. and, and, and uh, uh, knowledge because a lot of the knowledge today is misleading. You know, some from, from old times, you know, this doesn't work anymore. Um, when they tell you, you know, reduce your salt, what for? You know, it, it, that's the most important electrolyte in your body. That's it's really interesting because it, it, it's the same with <laughs> cholesterol. The medical community is yes. going; they're bouncing back and forth with cholesterol and how much is good and how much is no good. And you know, it all, it comes from <clears throat> heart surgeons who thought that cholesterol was bad for a long, long time. And you know, uh, everything has but how history. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it 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 when you look back, even eggs becoming a breakfast was marketing bacon was marketing cigarettes were marketing beer alcohol everything was marketing so is what is the you know you can't see ads for for liquor anymore on tv or for cigarettes they don't have like you know my physician smokes camel or my doctor smokes camels too right <laughs> or stuff <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. But now, I don't know if people, well, a lot of people probably don't remember those, but listen, that, kids, that was even it wasn't that long time, ago. Think, that, but, oh, yeah, we, they had those on television stuff. when I started watching TV, when we had our uh, black and white three-channel <laughs> TV, or less. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Your doctor smokes gambles, too. And, yeah, so yeah, it, it, yeah, it changes that. slowly, and, and now you, you have, what do you see in the uh, evening news? 6.30, you you know, our time, turn on NBC, and uh, they start the advertisements, and it's all medicine for illnesses I never heard of before, uh, but still somehow looks like many people are, are buying or, you know. And then the disclaimers at the end uh, may cause intestinal bleeding, cancer, ulcers, uh, sudden death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, son, you could die, but you know, but, ask your doctor takes about this. Care of the skin <laughs> rash, you know. Well, and I've heard many doctors uh, um, say how terrible that is. That people come in and ask them for a certain drug, where that's backwards. That's not the patient's well, job yes, to yes. come in and, and ask the doctor for a prescription. It, it's, it said, it's, ask it's the your other physician, way around. It know? does. It says, ask your doctor. It's like, and then if for, you need it, hopefully your doctor will tell right. you and you probably don't need it. Yeah, you probably don't need it. And then we, we remember the advertisement, you know, milk does a guy body good, you know, with the little milk mustache. <laughs> yes, All I of a sudden they I disappeared do. too. Yeah. 
Well, and I'm surprised. Now the milk, now the milk industry is trying to get the name milk taken off of any other type of beverage um, that's not cow's milk. So they're trying to get almond milk and you know milk made with peas and all you know all the other kinds of oak oat milk. Well, they're trying to get else. the name milk taken off of that because it's interrupting with their. It's I mean, dumb. it's not even the the percentage is so small, but it, it interrupts their their you know. Some would argue that that <laughs> cow's milk is for cows. So yeah, the, the yep, different some would advertisement. Argue. Yeah, yeah. I I love milk, but I my stomach tells me no cow's milk is not for people. <laughs> <laughs> my stomach wins that argument. So unfortunately, I, mean, I, have, the, I have to listen. Yeah. Bottom line is, you have to educate yourself. You have to be on on top of it the whole time. And you hear something, you have to double check elsewhere. But uh, the fact is, it's a push of a button, and, and you have more information than God. It's all available to you. You just have to sift through it. That's, that's the problem. That's the tough part, and that's the, the current, that's the new addiction is, you know, you were, you were illustrating how you're getting all these, uh, more and more people need their neck fixed because of looking at phones, and uh, they're... I don't think they're ever going to get to the point where they admit it's, that that's an addiction <laughs> and that you uh, it you're is, not and, getting and out. The, and it's a bigger problem than the neck. I mean, it's it's yeah. not oh, it's the, every... the neck is just physical. Yeah. It's it's that constant information flow. It's the electromagnetic magnetic radiation. It's the you know your 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 eyes take over eighty percent of your brain when you use them. Okay, now, right now, there's 20 million information around you. You can pick up like a little fraction of that, barely any. And, and it's mainly your eyes and mainly what's moving. <laughs> yeah. But it takes, takes over. So you can't really process certain things when, when your eyes are open. It just started with oh, that. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's it. well, that's why you close your eyes for meditation, right? Or, right. That's why but it's then easier. The, but then you, you open your eyes, eyes yeah. and everything hypnotizes you. You know, your phone, your TV, you know, it, it's telling you what to do. Drink milk, drink milk. No, don't drink milk. Eat eggs. No, don't eat eggs. And you just hypnotize and you go with the flow. And and that's the problem where where you have a few... You know, smart people, but the the herd follows the herd, and and really, it, you have to step out of it, and you have to you have to educate yourself. You have to find your answers. Everything, every question has an answer. You know, every problem has a solution. Every health problem has a solution. You know, everything has a a logical flow. Everything happens for a reason. So, you know, look into it. And, and <laughs> right, right. It, it's interesting. I am guilty of way, looking at way too much information. I actually have eye fatigue some days from staring at too many screens. Um, but I do catch myself sometimes, and not only myself, but kind of society hmm. being, being pushed around by the news and, and being... Um, uh, you know, like this devastating storm that's coming to California, that's the latest news, and you'll see it mm -hmm. everywhere. And it, the, most of the people in California are going to be like, yeah, it's snowing down here. That's, that's unusual. But, you know, it's, it's not literally a disaster necessarily. Um, just things like that. that if, we didn't, if the news was like it was uh, when we were kids, most of this stuff that we hear every day that people get freaked out about, we would hear about <laughs> it a week later, and we it wouldn't really raise any alarms at all, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it, we had the hurricane here a few months ago, went right over us. Uh, I mean, it was it was a disaster, but everywhere around the world, you know, like get away from there, you know. Well, where am I gonna go? You know, <laughs> we're good here. Don't worry about it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it, it becomes part of life. Now, you can look at it from one way and panic, or you can look at it from another way, like, hey, this is cool. We're going to live through another hurricane, or we're going to you know, feel that because it, it's tremendous power. I mean, it, it's amazing to be in it. And 
you know, it's your choice how you look at it. I cannot stop it. So might as well go with the flow. You don't get protected, but uh, it's, it's in the attitude. And that's your health as well. You start talking about negative things and, and repeat them. Eventually, they will happen, even if they, they didn't exist before. But the same goes with positive. You push towards the positive. You relax your energy. That's another thing that, that was a big issue with the, the, the pandemic. When, when it started, everybody was stressing. And all of a sudden, I started seeing this in, in the long distance healing. You know, some patterns were repeating. And that's when I realized that, yeah, it was the stress. It, it's the biggest, biggest problem with, with anyone. It's, it's not the cholesterol. It's not the, you know, alcohol or whatever. Mm -hmm. It, it's stress that is the, the, the biggest destroyer. Well, that really makes sense to me because we're seeing, uh, we, we're just seeing this mass. And, it, and I think that the pandemic uh, did affect it. We're seeing this mass amount of people with anxiety now. I, I just know every other day there's a new person saying they have anxiety and they have anxiety disorders, um, which is basically stress. And it's, it's, yes. it's self-perpetuating. Right. It, it, it just, the more yeah, you, you the, the, the more stress. you say, I have anxiety, the more you get <laughs> yes. anxious you're going to be. Yeah. It, it's pretty tough. It's a hard cycle to break sometimes. I mean, stress is good. The stress is fight or flight. You know, it, it's, it's there for you to save you. It's when the, when the dog is chasing you or a lion or something, but it, it's for a short burst of time. And when you're in it all the time, you're in the traffic, then you hear about the pandemic, then you have to stand in line, get your vaccination or whatnot, or checkups and such. It, it perpetuated. And, and again, just like in the, in the mass healing where we had lots of people and the, the mass mentality was helping the healing, this was the opposite. And it was globally because everybody was negative. It was, it was terrible, but we learned a lot. At least I did. <laughs> you know? I, I learned more than I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> we learned, I think we learned a lot about, uh, a lot of things. Yeah. I, I don't want to go completely into it now, but I, I, things came out that I was shocked about. I, I shouldn't have been. It's like, there was some eye openers that came out because of the pandemic. Um, it was not, you know, a lot of people like myself ended up doing okay. Like we got through it. I sort of, I don't think we're through it. I don't think there's, I think the world has completely changed uh, in different, different ways. Uh, it's, it's definitely different, but it doesn't mean that, you know, having that if you concentrate on positive energy, you're still going to have more positive energy it's, come towards of you. Course. That's, that's still the, the real reality of it. it yeah. It's kind I, of a I, magnet. You know, you smile yeah. at somebody, they smile back. Now, if you can spread that, okay, now you smile at two people. Now they will smile at four and so on. It could spread like that. But of course, it's not so, you know, beautiful in real life. Unfortunately, However, it's not so simple. I've read several studies now that they are, are realizing that smiling even at yourself in the mirror helps you feel better and helps your energy level. Yes, which absolutely. Which is amazing. Just, that's such a small thing. But yeah, I've heard this several times now. I, I believe that everything happens for a reason and there's something positive in everything. And, and uh, you know, go with the flow. That's number three. Mm -hmm. So you put these together, you can always look at everything from a positive point. Even when negative events happen, there's something positive attached. You, you, if nothing else, you learn something from it, which will make it positive. And, and that's, that's the simplest thing. So if you, if you follow that, that route, you will have no issues. You can keep on smiling. You'll be happy. Other than that, everybody is a healer. Your grandma or mom or whoever, when they picked you up, they were healing you. You, you hit your knee, they were kissing it. The pain went away, right? Oh, yeah, it, yeah. It's, you know, like magic. But uh, the energy exchange between a mother and child is great. And, and everybody else. The, the biggest healing power is still love. Without it, there's no healing.
you know you you have to love whatever you're doing whatever you're healing whoever you're working on love is that that energy that makes that drives everything so in a way i mean i just teach people how to use that love and i direct their their energy in in uh you know well in that direction of course <clears throat> oh and we were talking about before before i hit record you actually <laughs> ended up doing a project because of the the pandemic yes uh, yeah <laughs> i i had to cancel a lot of a lot of seminars that year and uh, uh my my cousin was here at the time and we went to daytona riding and stuff uh, during bike week and the pandemic happened right then that's when they they did the lockdown and we were stuck here we couldn't even go on the beach you know you were not allowed to get out so what do we do well we have a camera might as well what we talked about for all these years we put together a seven video uh, online school or, or a seminar where I, I do everything teach everything like in my live seminars like a week-long seminar but it's it's compressed and uh, you get the benefit of special effects he, he added all the you know how we look at the energy and you can see the lines between the fingers and such so it's easier explanation because you see you see what you supposed to see or what you're supposed to feel and i thought i actually thought <coughs> excuse me i saw a little sample of that on youtube and i thought that was really great i mean that was you know, yeah, for visual so, uh, people, it's really helpful, mm -hmm. to, I think, to see that. To, and anybody yeah. can find links on, on my site to it. The, the yep. first few, first two lectures are, are free. So, you know, you can see if this is for you or not. And it's still not that expensive compared to any other schools and or even to a couple stitches in the hospital. <laughs> and, uh, or even a massage, uh, a good massage. Yes, costs yes. that much. <laughs> and uh, and you, you do learn it for, for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really easy. And I guess we could do some now. I, I can explain it for, for your listeners who are not seeing this, how to do. Okay, so first of all, put your arms out straight in front of you. And let your hands drop, let your fingers drop. So straight arm, relaxed fingers. Now lift your hands up just to be in line with your forearm and right. fingers straight. Okay, so there's a little bit of effort in it, right? So this was relaxed. This with straight, there's a little bit of tension in your fingers, right? Now with that tension, I want you to hold a basketball size ball. Just visualize a, a ball between your hands. And when you think you have it, press your palms closer by an inch and then let them back. And again by an inch and let them back. Do you feel that little resistance between yes. your hands? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Kid, right? I, I, absolutely. Uh, uh -huh. Now loosen up your arms, but keep your fingers still tight, you know, slightly tight. They're apart. A little bit bent, but there's a little bit of tension in them. Again, kind of like holding a ball. And keep doing this, but now speed it up a little bit. Kind of bounce back and forth. And you get more and more of that feeling, of that magnetic feeling. Like when you play with magnets and you can't push them together. Right? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you may feel a little bit of tingling as well, a little bit of heat, a little pressure. Now come all the way to an inch distance while you do that. And also some, some points you may feel more than others. You have several layers of, of this energy. Now make them flat and straight and stop for a moment. So we're about an inch apart now. And you also feel a little more heat, more tingling there. But if you move your fingers just a little bit like this, you'll feel a little bit of squeakiness there as if your knuckles needed lubrication. Can you feel that? It's oh, right yes. when you're yes. in, in that uh, holding the energy. That's also part of that feeling. Now, all these feelings, you know, we go step by step. I have exercises where you feel it more, then you feel it more, then you feel it more. And also you can do back and forth and 
and feel something bigger than the basketball. It's it's there all the time. You just have to pay attention to it. I, I can definitely feel it. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone listening, <laughs> cool, everyone right? listening, try this. Rewind it. Uh, try it. <laughs> now come back to an inch distance. Again, hold it and start making these circles. I'll show you sideways. So just a small circle with your with your hands. You will feel again the heat tingling pressure, but also there's a center of that rotation. Can you feel that? Yeah, it's almost like a bicycle crank or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was demonstrating it here to somebody with magnets before. Two magnets, right? You turn around and you can't push them together. And there's this circle where, where the magnetic field takes you around. And that's the same circle you would feel with your hands. It literally, it follows that, that path. It will come easier and easier every day. Now, you can imagine after 30, 40 years what, what it feels like. You know, you pick yeah. it up and like, whoosh, yeah. like a like strong magnet. But anybody can do it. And you can feel your own energy around your face. You know, you, you bring your hand up and you, you feel the warmth in your face or you feel the, the, you know, the face in your hand. Do small movements as if you were washing your face. And you may feel that same uh, magnetic warm feeling. It's interesting. I can feel a lot more heat on mm -hmm. my face. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah. imagine if you have a headache with much energy around your head. All you do is go around, pull it off, shake your hands off. And again, you go around, pull it off, shake your hands off. Do it for a couple of minutes until your headache stops. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> that actually is that's pretty amazing. The, the, I mean, uh, I can feel that uh, right away. I've done things like this, but it's been a while. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you definitely and and uh, anybody yeah. can do it. I mean, you can perform feeling uh, healing even if you don't feel any of this. However, anybody can do it, and you know you can help your family, neighbors, friends. It, you don't have to be a physician and, and, you know, helping everybody who comes to your office. It can be anybody around. That, that's the bottom line. So come check out the website and check out the school. And uh, if you're really into it, you can join me in Italy in August. We're doing a, a master seminar in a 13th century monastery in, in Umbria. Oh, wow. Wow. That's amazing. It will be amazing. That's amazing. This is a, that was a perfect segue to start to <laughs> start to start wrapping up the show because we could go for hours talking about this. But uh, I really appreciate you being on and all of the links here, all the all the stuff he was talking about, which is mainly his website, will be in the uh, in the show notes, show description, so you can get them there. And uh, I'll just ha I'll just say you've been listening to. Were you still talking? This is Joel Albrecht, and I've been speaking to Shonger Daniel. Was that close? Was that close? Close. Very close. <laughs> <laughs> Internationally recognized energy healer and a really fun person to have a conversation with as well. I really appreciate you being here. And uh, I hope a lot of people are, you know, pay attention to this. Go check it out. It, it really is um, something that can probably help you. Uh, unless you have a perfect life and you don't need anything, any kind of healing. I, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> haven't met anyone like that yet, but perhaps one day. All right. Thanks again for listening. And um, I will see you next time. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.